Father, we have prayed. <laughs> Spirit of the living God, I humble myself so that you shall be exalted. I can't review Christ except you. Come and do what you do best. Review Christ in, law, in us, Lord. You said in your word that no one can say Jesus is Lord except the Holy Spirit reveals such to us. Father, Lord, review Christ to us, Lord. Reveal your, your son, Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Put your hands together for yourself. Praise the Lord. Why, why stand in? Put your hands together for our Reverend, Reverend Uli Ami Bakare. My spiritual father, he, he gives us a, a protocol so that, so I'm very, I'm I want to stay <laughs> on the earth. Praise the Lord. Let's put our, our hands for our mommy in Asemsha. Let's put our hands for our mommy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, where is my, my beautiful wife? Put your hands together for her, you know. I have to follow protocol. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Put your wonderful ministers in the house. Put your hands together for the wonderful ministers in the house. Hallelujah. Now let's sit like kings and queens in the house. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, I was giving a top. Uh, uh, in my, uh, my score as it started. And so how, how do I look? I, I look on you. Praise the Lord. Pastor Joseph, I will need the, the mic to be stable. Okay. What to learn from Abraham? That's the, the title of my topic. What to learn from Abraham? Hallelujah. What to learn from Abraham? Have you written it down? Praise the Lord. Okay. Let's go to, let's see the scriptures. Um, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 5 to 14. Holy Spirit, me. In the name of Jesus. Galatians 3 from verse 5. Let's read from verse 5. Galatians 3 from verse 5. Galatians 3 and verse 5. Galatians 3. Okay. Um, can we read all together? Can we read? Let's read. Want to go? Okay. What does the lavish supply of the Holy Spirit in your life? It said, and the miracles of God's tremendous power have to do with you, keeping religious law. Let's give the TPT version. Let's go down to the New King James Version. Want to go? Therefore, he who supplies the spirits to you and works miracle among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Mark the word. Two words you will mark. Number one, supply of the spirit. And number two, the hearing of what? Faith. Of hearing of faith. Number one, supply of the Spirit. And number two, the hearing of faith. Next verse, verse 6. Verse 6. Now, New King James wants to go. Just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Verse 7. Said, verse 7. Verse 7. Said, Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Only those who are of faith are sons of what? Abraham. Please, I want us to come together. Um, uh, the adults over there with the children, just come together so that I can see your face. So that I can um, speak into the adults and both the children. Praise the Lord. Now, the scripture is telling us that if you are of faith, then you are not a son of Abraham. There are many names Jesus was named in the Bible. The son of God. I don't know why this mic is breaking. He was named the son of God. He was named the son of man. He was also named the son of Abraham. Now this choice is that if you're not of faith, that you're not a son of Abraham. Praise the Lord. So the question you're supposed to ask yourself today, this night, are you son? Are you a son of Abraham? Hallelujah. Ask yourself that question. Am I a son of Abraham? I can't see it from the adults. I, I... Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now the question is, why is Abraham, why is Abraham rated so high? Why is Abraham rated so high? Hallelujah. Who can give me an answer? You know, this is a Bible studies class. Who can give me an answer? 
Why is Abraham rated so high? I need an answer, please. Yes, 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 um, um, Sister Anita. Why is Abraham rated so high? Give her the mic. Because he's the father of all sons. He's the father of all sons. Praise the Lord. Any other answer? Why is Abraham rated so high? Who is giving me an answer? Yes, your answer, Royinka. Because of his, because he's the father of all sons, because of his 100% obedience. Okay, you want to give me an answer? Uh, uh, I want this to get on record. Please, I need the mic. Eh? So continue. His faith. Because of his faith. Okay. Who else has an answer? Praise the Lord. Who else has an answer? No one else. Why is it that Abraham is rated so high? Why not Noah? Why not Enoch? Why not Abel? The first man that was slaughtered because he worshipped God through sacrifice. Why not all those patriarchs that came before Abraham? Why, start, why starting from Abraham? Why is Abraham rated so high? Any answer? Any answer? So let us discuss this because we have come, have, we have come to Bible studies. I need it to be, to be attentive because the Bible said in Romans 10, 17, it said faith comes by hearing. Can you hear me? It didn't stop just by hearing. It gave two types of hearing there. Yeah. By hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the first kind of hearing is hearing by the word, which is the second kind. And the first kind is the hearing of faith, which you just read now. The supply of spirit and the hearing of faith. So the, in Romans 10, 17, the Bible is giving us two types of hearing. It says faith comes by hearing one and by hearing by the word of God. Praise the Lord. So let us go back to Abraham because I'm, I'm talking about what to learn from Abraham. Why is it that Jesus had to come from the lineage of Abraham? Not from the lineage of other sons of Noah. We have so many persons that after Noah, Noah gave birth to three children. We have so many uh, genealogy after the birth of those three children and, and they started growing. Why Abraham? Why, why, God is, why is God tracing Jesus from the foundation of uh, or the genealogy of Abraham? So we are going to know because in Genesis they talked about Abraham. In the books of the prophets, they talk about Abraham. In Psalms 51 and verse 1 and 2, the Bible said, look unto your father, Abraham. Praise the Lord. So the question is, why Abraham? Let's read, let, let, let's read the prophets, the book of the prophets, Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 2. Let's see what God is speaking. You know, if you want to hear God speak, I mean the father. Uh, hello, Bible school students. Praise the Lord. If you want, look at the scripture. Just leave it there. If you want the fat, if you want to hear the father speak, just check the book of the prophets. Hallelujah. There are times when Jesus speaks. In our Bible, we say red handwriting. Then there are times when the Holy Spirit spoke in the epistles. But if you want to hear God the Father speaking, praise the Lord. I mean the Father, the Almighty God speaking. Look at the books of the prophets. Now he said, listen to me. This is God speaking. He said, you who follow after righteousness, you who seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you were hewn. He said, and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. You were not dug anyhow. You that wants to serve God, you that wants to become a Christian, you that say, I want to be righteous. So they said, you are not, you can't just fall from heaven. You came out, you were dug that from a pit, from a foundation. Now verse 2 says, look in, look in, look in. Verse 2, verse 2. Isaiah 51, verse 2. Now he said, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. So why is the prophets, the book of the prophets, still establishing that if you want to be righteous, you have to go to the foundation of righteousness and the foundation of faith, then the person that will see there as a face, as a framework, as the uh, modus operandi, or as the, as the way, is Abraham's face. Why is it that it's Abraham's face? 
that's the question we are supposed to do because we are going to learn some things from Abraham, the story of Abraham. That was the topic I was giving to minister to you today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the, God is speaking here. You can take off the scripture. God is speaking here that, <laughs> that you should look unto your father, Abraham. My father, my, my, my God. Do you know something? God had to name himself from Abraham. He said, I am the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac. And I'm the God of Jacob. Why starting from Abraham? We all know that Noah, Enoch, Abel, they all came before Abraham, right? Why is he starting from Abraham? But Noah sacrificed though. And because of the sacrifice of Noah, we found out that God did not cause it again. Praise the Lord. We also found out that Noah's grandfather, great grand, yes, grandfather Enoch, also pleased God to the extent that the God took him from the earth. No one, they couldn't see Enoch again. They found out that Enoch is missing from the face of the earth because he pleased God. Why not start from Enoch? Why not start from, from Noah? Why is it that it is Abraham? Praise the Lord. So the question I'm asking you today is, is that why is it that it is you that God is looking at for? What is so special about you? And okay, let me not rush this, this is someone. I still have 30 minutes to round up. Praise the Lord. Now, if we go, if we go to the Gospels, Jesus also gave so many stories from Abraham. If it didn't come out from the mouth of Jesus, we would have questioned some things in the Bible. But from the mouth of Jesus, he gave so many stories. In Matthew chapter 8, scripture, Matthew chapter 8 and verse 10 to 11, there was a centurion and um, this, praise the Lord, this centurion servant, leave the scripture there, my face is not important, the word of God is more important. Uh, the, the centurion servant was sick and he, says, he, he sent someone to go and meet Jesus. Other translations say he went to himself. Other translations say he sent someone. Um, and they said, in other uh, accounts, they said, this man has built a synagogue. Praise the Lord. And do you know what he told Jesus? He said, Jesus said, I want to come to your house. Wait to the king goodness. Jesus wants to come to your house. He said, no, don't come. No, is it not strange? Wait to Pastor Ben. Jesus said, I am coming to your house. And you tell him, no, don't come. Just, just speak the word only. Praise the Lord. So, what is Jesus saying now? He said, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, he said, surely I say to you, I have not found such faith, not even in Israel. But if you trace that faith, the next slide, if you trace that faith, you see where it's coming from. This is Jesus establishing a fact. He said, I say unto you that many will come from the east and from the west and sit down with who? Abraham. Now we see where that faith is coming from. Praise the Lord. Are you seeing where the faith is coming from? So the man has been a disciple all along before he became a centurion. He didn't just land with that kind of faith. You can't just land with that kind of faith. You must pass through some stages. Praise the Lord. Let's go to other scriptures. Um, Luke chapter 16 and verse 18. We are, oh, Jesus was the one also speaking. I tell you the, the, the gospel, Jesus had to choose, uh, establish so many facts about, about um, uh, Abraham. Now this story is about the rich man. And we find that, that anyone that dies now, we have to go onto a place that is nicknamed Abraham's bosom. Why is it that is Abraham? Why did they use Abraham's bosom? Why? Enoch is there, but Enoch had to align to Abraham's bosom. Meanwhile, Enoch don't pay before Abraham come. Noah don't pay before Abraham come. Abel, it has been long. Do you understand me now? Are you getting the flow? Because we, we have somewhere we are going to and we'll land. So why is it that is uh, uh, that place that every man that dies, that is righteous so, because there are two places. The one that a rich man fell to and the other one that which is as bosom. And even there, the one that went to hell had to still call Abraham, Father Abraham. 
please tell Lazarus to give me a drop of water. So even DSF, he, he, he still established the fact that Abraham is the father of all nations. Praise the Lord. He, he wants to repent, but it's too late. Loves have started coming. I have, uh, please send people to my brothers. So why was on earth that love was not showing? So why there? Because I will show you some things that anyone that comes close to Abraham or sees Abraham, there's something significant that happens. There is a turn around that happens. Praise the Lord. Okay. Luke chapter uh, 16 verse 19 okay let's look let's go to chapter 13 from verse 10 now he said now he was teaching in one of the synagogue uh, on the sabbath verse 11 please be fast with me he said uh, behold there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up next uh, verse he said and behold I, okay he said but when jesus saw her he called her by him and said to her, woman, you're not supposed to be sick. See, it is, I, I just checked in the realm of the spirit. This is Jesus speaking. You're already loosed from infirmity. Praise the Lord. But why, why are you under infirmity for 18 years? Praise the Lord. Let's go to verse 16. The reason why Jesus says in the spirit realm, let's go to verse 16. In the spirit realm that and say that she's not supposed to be sick is because of this. He said, Lord, okay, verse 16, he said, so, so oh, not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, praise the Lord, as a son and daughter of Abraham, you're not supposed to be sick. It's not in that foundation. It's not found there. So if sickness is there, then there is a problem. All this woman not to be a daughter of Abraham, you're loose though. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's establish another scripture. Uh, Luke 19 from verse 1 to 10. Luke 19. Let's read verse 1, then we'll get to verse 9. Are we there? Now, before you read this verse 9, there was a man called Zach uh, Zacchaeus. Now, this man was short, as the Bible said, and he wanted to see Jesus, but he had to go climb um, a, a tree, see Jesus. And verse 9, put it on verse 9. So Jesus is seen saying that. Uh, this kind of faith, the only place that this faith is traceable to, put it verse 9. Abraham, uh, verse 9. Now, and Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he also, this is the mount of Jesus, he also is a son of who? Abraham. So now I've been asking a question that why, why, are they, why is it Abraham? We just read from Genesis. We just read from the prophets. We just we are reading the gospel now. Praise the Lord. In short, the, the, the gospel, Jesus, many of the, uh, the parables Jesus was speaking. Daughter of Abraham, son of Abraham. Why, why Abraham? Why not Enoch? Why not Noah? You'll find out that God does not have uh, favorites. He has intimates. No one is God's favorite. You only have intimates. Once you get close to God, you are going to be established. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the epistles. Now, let's leave the gospel. Let's go to the epistles. Maybe the Paul line is Romans chapter uh, uh, 4 and verse 16. Romans chapter 4 verse 16 says, Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So there is a faith of Abraham. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I, I said, that there was one day I was teaching, I said, if not that, you know, God stopped Abraham for sacrificing Isaac. You know? No, no, no. Meaning that I am the only one that can do. Oh, what kind of man is this? No, 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 no. So I'm, I'm the only one that can do such, can, that can do that kind of thing, that can sacrifice my son, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So we are going to know what to learn from Abraham. I, I just have to establish a fact and ask a question in your heart that what is it to learn? I, what I'm trying to say to you is that 
day Abraham, if you're a Christian, you're in the modern day Abraham. Praise the Lord. Because once you give your life to Christ and you want, you want to align to righteousness, automatically you're now the son of Abraham or the daughter of Abraham. Praise the Lord. Because lion cannot give birth to sheep. Lion gives birth to lion. Do you get me? Praise the Lord. So you're the modern day Abraham. What I'm trying to say is that everything that is happening, Christian, as a Christian, no, not the other side, happens to Abraham. It, oh, you think everything was written in scripture? Praise the Lord. I, 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 I will show you some things. Okay. Now, what was I talking about? Okay, let's get to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 8. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 8. Now, let's read. One to go. And the scripture foreseen that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. Wait, oh. The scripture foresaw, right from the Old Testament, that God is going to justify all of us by faith. It said, the, the scripture also preached the gospel to Abraham. So even before Abraham left the fact, they can't just come and tell me that I'm not a Christian, no. For example, if I'm a Muslim, God is not, a pastor not come and tell me that, leave your father's house. No, 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 no. It just, just, I can't leave my father's house just like that. If not that, I have known God a long time. I have been a disciple. The Bible said, it's the, 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 the scripture for saying that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, in you all the nations shall be blessed. Praise the Lord. This is what I'm saying to you, listening to me. In you, you, your generation, are you getting me now? In you that is here, modern day Abraham, your generation shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. Okay, let's go to, let's, let's check some things. Let us know what to learn from Abraham. Let's go to John, John uh, chapter 8. Let's uh, jump the scripture to John chapter 8. Hallelujah. 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 Now, we are going to do some refresher course. John chapter 8, from verse 31 and 32. Want to go? Let's take this refresher course. He said, Then Jesus said to the Jews who what? Who believed in believed him. Now, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Stop there. In the ecosystem of the kingdom of God, there are uh, about four stages of the life of a believer. And I, I, I've shared this to the Bible school classes before. Now, Jesus, in, can you put it in King James? To the Jews. In King James said that he was talking to the Jews who believed in him and said, if you want to remain a believer, it's okay. But if you continue in my word, you will become a disciple. Praise the Lord. In Nigeria today in the world, we have so many disciples. We have few. We have so many believers. We have few disciples. He said, I saw King James says, he said to Jesus, to the Jews, which believed in him, if you continue in my word, that is, if you give yourself to, to learning, to, to teaching, I want to know more about I want to know his ways. I want to find out more things, more revelation, more keys to the kingdom of God. Then, you are my disciples indeed. So the first stage of this ecosystem is the believer stage. The second stage is the disciple stage. No, mind you, we are still talking about Abraham, but I want to give us a refresher course of how Abraham got to attain this height that he attained. Praise the Lord. Let's go to um, John 15, 15. The second and the third stage. Now the third stage is the stage of the servants. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. John 15, 15. The third stage is the stage of the servants. Now at this third stage, now my, I want you to listen to me. In the believer stage, in the disciple stage, and in the servant stage, if you choose to become a believer, the grace of God is, suffic is sufficient to you. At that full stage, at that believer stage. 
if you choose to relax and say, I just believe in God, and uh, the grace of God is sufficient. But if you, if you want to become a disciple and choose to remain a disciple, the grace of God is also sufficient in that stage. But in, in this servant, he says, Henceforth, I call you not servant. Now, why is it saying that at this servant stage is because you have limited knowledge? You say, Because the servant knoweth not what the Lord is doing. Praise the Lord. Then the first stage, he said, I call you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made them unto you. Now, the, 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 French, uh, the French stage is, the, is that God cannot hide things from you. What God wants to do to, your, to, uh, to the earth or to the people, will first of all reveal to you, you will be having discussions. You will be having discussions on how who will become the next president of Nigeria. You, as in, do you understand what I'm saying? So most of, you, most of you saying, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. They call me friend. You're not, actually, you are not a friend of God. Because if you are a friend of God, tell me what is, happening, what is going to happen tomorrow. Or who is going to be the next president of Nigeria. Or how is the election going to be? It's the Lord. Now, at the servant stage, I told you the liver stage is those who believe in God and choose to serve God. The grace is sufficient. They want to know about God, you grow from being a believer to becoming a disciple. Then the disciple stage, you must have known the ways of God. Because you can't get to the servant stage without knowing the ways of God. Because the servant stage is where a stage where God will say, leave your father's house. Then you will just answer and say, I'm leaving. You will not ask questions. That is who a servant is. a Lord. A servant is someone that doesn't ask questions. You are always loyal. What God says you do, you always do. Praise the Lord. That is who a servant. Now, the question is, which stage are you? And the question is, if you are in the servant stage, how can you serve a spirit well? Praise the Lord. You know, so, much, so many times I've, I, I, I've tried um, 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 doing t to a pre to, how do I, I put it? I've tried um, appealing or uh, serving my wife so that it will please her, trying to please my wife. But most of the times I failed. So if I can fail pleasing a human being. So what about the spirit? Praise the Lord. So I, I was discussing with the basic foundation class. That, is that, that, that if God wants to sweep this house. It will go around to all of our members. Who will like us to sweep this house? The, the heart. This is hard something though. The heart that is willing to yield to the spirit that say carry broom and start sweeping is the person that you use. You will think that is the person that is sweeping. It is God sweeping through her because she has submitted from the heart. Are you getting me now? Now many people said saw that dead too. They'll be saying ah this place is dead to you. But the spirit will be telling carry broom and sweep. But there is no submission. They are still asking questions. Why will I sweep? Me will dress like this. Then you are not a servant. You are a believer. Praise the Lord. Are you getting me now? You know, you know our, our reverend gave us on Thursday an, an encounter how he was praying in his in his in his room and God took him to uh, he took him and assisted the woman who, who was dead and the spirit went back and returned him back. Now I remember the case of Philip. Philip was doing evangelism, was preaching. God took him. That is not my will. Yes, I, 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 you have a will that you have to do for me. Then after everything, it, it, it returned him back. I'm telling you that your heart has to be ready to serve God without questions. God, use me. And at that time, Reverend was the only one. When God has scans that area, that is, that is heart, that his heart is ready to be used. Do you understand me without asking questions? Praise the Lord. Are you, are you getting me? Now, at this stage, even a servant has already passed through the uh, place of a disciple, but he's still learning no, but he's not asking questions. Okay. It seems I'm, I'm, I'm deviating. Now, for you to do things according to the will of God, you, it must pass through the fire. Are you getting me? The Bible said, when John was describing Jesus, he said his eyes was like a fire. Do you get me? Let's go to Hebrew. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 29. Hebrews 12, 29. Hebrews 12, 29. I see the disciples say, Joe, I can no claim it here, I can no be. 
I see they learn. I see they learn. There are stages in being disciples. Hebrews 12, 29. Hebrews 12, 29. Palikushke prahadi kataria melushke po patatishkorapa. Let's read. Want to go? Uh, okay, let's go to 28 first. Go, get to 28 first. Now, let's read. He said, Wherefore we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God as servants acceptably with reverence and with godly fear. For our God is a consuming, that God is a consuming fire. It's the test that that serving God that is, will be acceptable, will pass through that. And the Bible, John said, when he saw Jesus, his eyes was, was burning. So, if you're serving God in church today, it mu God it must pass through the perspective of Jesus that ah, Jesus will see that ah, you have done well. Perspective. Praise the Lord. His eyes is the consuming fire. And any service you do, he must see, he must pass through that burning test that you have done well. And do you understand me? Praise the Lord. Now let's get let's get back to Abraham. Let's get back to Abraham. Uh, Genesis chapter 14. And verse 14. So I'm trying to tell you that before Abraham was, before God to say, Abraham, leave your father's house for a land that I will show you. See, today we don't know the land where God showed Abraham. See, today God never showed Abraham that land. Leave your father's house for a land I will show you. Abraham took his look, like Mumu, and left his father's house. What I'm trying to tell you is that Abraham has left the stage of being a believer. I've left the stage of being a disciple. And you cannot be a servant without knowing the ways and the instructions. At the servant stage, you, 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 are, you don't know, you are not asking why, you're just following instruction. What, what they say to do, you just do it. Praise the Lord. So I'm telling you that Abraham has passed those stages. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let's, let's 14. I said, put the scripture, my face is not important. It's, the Bible is more important. 14. Now, so it was when Abraham came into Egypt and Egyptians saw the woman that he was very beautiful. Genesis 14, 14. Not 12, 14. Please, I have limited time so that I will rush it. Now, there was, there was a, something going on and Lot was in trouble. And Abraham had to save Lot. And the Bible said it took 300 men 318 men, servants, who were born in his house. And he went, he pursued as far as Dan. And do you know what? He became uh, victorious. So Abraham became victorious. Wait, oh. But we did not see in the Bible how 318 men, the Bible says he trained them. He armed them. In King James Version, you see, he trained them. Oh, you know Sabi Ho Arrow. No, no, no. Abraham will come. Hold it. Fire it, uh -huh. that's how to be done. 200. Where did he learn it from? Praise the Lord. How did he learn how to be an army? But he's a farmer oh, into cattle. Where did he learn to go to war? If you read further, he also trained them to go to war at night. So, how did he learn strategy in going to war? That is only midnight prayer is the best kind of prayer a human being can pray. How did Abraham know? So he must have gone through those stages. The disciples, he must have learned. Praise the Lord. And the Bible, if you go for that, he defeated five kings, three three men. Eh? Praise the Lord, though. Hmm. Okay. I'm just going to jump this because of my time. Let's go to Genesis 18. Genesis 18. Let's go to 23. 23. Now, something happened here. I, I've done so many plays, so I'm going to establish this fact to a final bus stop that you should not become a believer. You should uh, not. Believers are oh, miracle signs. I wonder, hey, now yeah, they happen. More can let it healing. That, they, those ones, they are believers. Praise the Lord. You come to church, you don't want to, they say, yeah, we have meeting after church service, so workers will wait behind, so workers don't go. They are believers. Praise the Lord. They don't want to learn, they don't want to wait for meeting. Eh? They don't want to wait for meeting. 
the raw schoolhouse. You believe you're a believer. The grace is sufficient there, oh, but I tell you there is no gain there. I'm telling you the truth. Now, in verse 23, and Abraham came near and said, Now, watch the statement. God wants to. Abraham saw three men, and he rushed prepared meal for them, told his wife to do everything, and because he was and that they were angels and when they were going and these three men see let's go to 17 these three men after seeing this these things it, they went and abraham came near to the lord go 18 verse 17 and god wants to allow these three men go but there's a discussion between god and himself please take it to verse 17 and god says shall i hide from Abraham what I'm doing no imagine God is talking to himself I want to do something to Sodom I want to destroy Sodom let me hide it from Abraham no 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 Abraham has gotten a stature he has gotten to a level where I can't hide anything from him meaning that he has moved from believer stage to disciple stage to servant stage now he's not the friend of God so as a friend of God stage things can't be hidden from you can I should I hide these things from Abraham Go to 23 and go, no, 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 I, I, okay, I, I, I will not, let me just say it. So at this place, God will tell, God will be free to discuss with you. And there was a negotiation going on. And Abraham was negotiating with God. He said, he was saying, ah, God. And Abraham near, came near and said, would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Ah, God, see which kind, why Abraham go ask me this kind of question? But I want to destroy the people now. Abraham come, who come? Say, God, but you, your word say that you will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. But you won't come go against your word. Oh, Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. Okay, let's continue. Verse 24. Verse 24. Let's go to 27 first. 27 first. My God, I have limited time. Now, it's 27. You know, I read in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, that if you're going to serve God, you're going to serve him with reverence. Now, in verse 27, Abraham was reverencing God. He said, God, it's not because I've reached that stature of friendship, old, I'll come to challenge you or talk with you. Me, I'm just from dust, too. Indeed, I know, I, I know who I be. Abraham was saying, I, I, who am dust and ashes, I've taken it up upon myself to speak to you. Me, I'm from dust, so I know be anything, you know. As in, he's reverencing God now. Now, it got to a stage where what was not in the agreement, God had to bring out lots from there. Are you getting me? God has to bring out lots from the destruction of Sodom. What I'm trying to tell you to do is that move from the stage of being a believer. If you will not gain anything there in that stage. Go and learn more about God. Get to the disciple stage. Praise the Lord. Then when you get to a disciple stage, the Holy Spirit is not a stagnant spirit. It's a moving spirit move from being a disciple and become a servant but before you become a servant that attains some level of knowledge about god so when we when we announce that there is a bible school going on you're supposed to rush because you want to become a disciple when we announce that there's a dst class going on you want to rush because you want to become a disciple praise the lord i'm telling you that you are the modern day abraham but if you choose to remain where you are you will not leave your father's house praise the lord you will not leave your father's house it is only after you've left your father's house is when you can become the, the father of your generation. Praise the Lord. So in this place now, Abraham is negotiating for some righteous people that choose to become a disciple in the land of Sodom. So do you want to be the one they are negotiating for or do you want to sit on the table where they negotiate for you? Praise the Lord. Trying to say to you is that where are you are you the, the one that they said we are waiting for in your family? In your family, eh? Or should you wait for another one? Praise the Lord. In your family, are you the one that we are waiting for? The deliverer in that family. So if God is going, if something is going to happen to your brother or sister, will God come to you? That is what I'm asking you this night. If God, something is going to happen to your fa father, maybe the devil wants to snatch your brother or your sister. Can God come to negotiate with you? In prayer, you must gain a stature. So, what are you going with to God in prayer? Your capacity matters. Praise the, praise the Lord. I want us to be on our feet. 
praise the Lord. Now, if you know in one in 30, because my time is short, if you know in your heart that you need an impartation for the next level of being a disciple, you want to move from where you are, just come forward now in 30 seconds, 28 seconds. You want to move from where you are from being a disciple, from being a believer. I don't want to be a believer anymore. I'm telling you, none of the things we do, we do by ourselves. We have the spirit backing. I'm telling you, if you need the spirit backing, you want to move from being a believer to a disciple. And if you want to move from being a disciple to a servant. Because I don't think we are friends of God. Because we are friends of attain some, some level. Come forward, come forward. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Come forward, come forward. Mali kushke prahata yaradush. now stretch your hand towards the altar and begin to tell it to God. Say, Father, I submit myself to be used by you. I no longer have my own life. I therefore take your yoke upon myself. Your yoke become my yoke. Your body become my body. Now take my body away from me. Take my yoke away from me. Now cleanse my sin by your precious blood. From today, I stop from being a believer to being a servant. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting me right now. Write my name right now in your own book. Remove my name from the book of untimely deaths and destructions. Thank you, Abba Father, for in Jesus' precious name we are prayed. I will put our hands together for Jesus and go back to our seat. Praise the Lord. Now I want us to quickly, just in five minutes, want to ask questions. So in case you have a question, can I just see your hands?